Today, the Activision uprising gets real. Then, what if the AI problem at Facebook just can't be solved? In Thanksgiving, how tech can help solve thorny problems. Plus, tech and the parade, because, well, it's the parade. I'm Alexis Cordato, and this is Future Forward. I am Stephen Rosenbaum. Let us launch. Hey, Alexa. Steve, I'm in such denial that we're talking about Thanksgiving. I, uh, I, I should tell you, in addition to loving, you know, Halloween and other, stra- I am a huge fan of the Halloween, of the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I mean, as an Upper West Sider, how could you not be? Do you go watch the balloons get blown up every year? When we had small children, we did. And it went from being this charming little, no one knew about it in the neighborhood thing, to being just like, you know when the NYPD does this insane route where you go in at 67th Street and then you have to walk down and then you make a left turn and then you go back up and they like it's like this ribbon it's it's like they took a, a playbook from the Disney line trick only they do it not well and so it's just torturous right um, <laughs> and so no we have not been in a while but it is also in our building it is the three days in the year when they raise the parking rates exorbitantly. I bet. I mean, it's probably, Oh wait, the public can park in your building. Well, it's a public, it's, it's a, the building has a public parking lot for. Oh, okay. But residents can access it. From- yeah. Yeah. I don't think it raises, I don't think they raise the price for the, I, I haven't had a car in a really long time. All right. Let, let's, we've got three chapters today. They're all going to be really fun, but I want to just jump in and start and talk about Activision because, um, uh, it it's a it's a great story and it's a terrible story kind of at the same time. And like probably for me at least the least surprising news in the history of gaming news. So so I guess I don't understand that. Um, wh- I why it's two parts? It's like one you know like in this Me Too era, right? Like how many instances of men in privileged, powerful positions have abused their positions and been negligent of bad behavior, right? Like, it's just, this is this is the time that we're living in. It's just inevitable. Things are just going to surface. And I'd say that, you know, the gaming community has is notorious for actually having a very, like, toxic culture, like going back to, like, Gamergate. So maybe for for listeners who don't know what Activision is, you'll you'll know about the brands, right? Let's let's Mm -hmm. just talk about the brands for a minute. Yeah, it's Activision Blizzard. So they produce Warcraft, Call of Duty. um, Guitar Hero. Starcraft, uh, Overwatch. so. So lots of big, very profitable games and almost 5,000 employees. More than that, I actually saw in 2019 they reported 9,700. So they're they're probably over 10,000 employees. So big company, but I guess I guess what I don't get is so so maybe we should talk about what the act. So so there's a huge employee uprising. They want the CEO out, right? I right. Mean, there was a was it the Wall Street Journal? They broke news that their CEO Bobby Kodak basically did like knew of wrongdoings, right? In various parts of the country and company and did nothing. And also was like complicit. So I don't, without getting into details that aren't public or that, you know, that are just too uncomfortable. When you say wrongdoing, like he did like, is it sexual harassment? Is it racist? What, what, what is, what is he accused of? I mean, it was in like mul- multiple accounts of harassment over several years where it's like, okay, if I were, if I were an employee and I filed an official HR complaint and I would say, Hey, my supervisor discriminated against me for X, Y, Z, or I was at a company event and there was, you know, an inappropriate like breach of misconduct that took place and nothing happened. All right. So here's here's the the Washington Post paragraph that 
I think helps clarify the board's now concern. In contrast with past company statements, CEO Bob Kotick was aware of many incidents of sexual harassment, sexual assault, gender discrimination at Activision uh, Blizzard, but failed to ensure that executives and managers responsible were terminated or to recognize or address the systemic nature of the company's hostile workplace culture, the shareholders led by Strategic Organizing Center Investment Group wrote in a joint letter addressed to the company's board of directors and shared with the Washington Post. Um, so, okay, a whole lot of dumb questions here. Like, it's a big company, it has lots of revenue. Like, what, what, what does the board have to gain by not either discipline, disciplining or holding the CEO responsible? I mean, I think this is like another, I mean, related conversation about board governance, right? Like they, the incentives are misaligned in the sense that, you know, they're almost there to protect the CEO. Right. And so if things like this happen and then they lose, then they piss off shareholders and their stock goes down and they lose money. But if you've got a, of, if you've got 10% of your workforce so upset that they're walking off the job, I mean, at some point, doesn't the company just start to actually kind of collapse of its own dysfunction? I mean, you would think so, but I mean, if it depends on how the board, the relationships on the board and how they're structured, you can make the argument, how come Facebook's board didn't move to replace Mark Zuckerberg years ago? Like the moment the Cambridge Analytica scandal broke, how was that not uh, a conversation that resulted in the board removing Mark Zuckerberg and potentially Sheryl Sandberg? Yeah, well, we're gonna we'll get to Facebook in a minute because there's a good story that. But it's like a good example again. I think yeah. what, why I said in the beginning this is one of the least surprising stories is that we continue to see these headlines in tech where leaders are failing their constituents, their constituents being employees, shareholders, et cetera. And then the boards are also failing to actually hold, you know, the CEO's like feet to the fire. Like there's just no accountability. But I think what's incredible is that you are seeing uh, movements inside the workplace where workers are taking action and it's, creating conversation and attention in a way that's unprecedented. So Girls Who Code have dropped Activision, their Activision Blizzard partnership over failure of company leadership. I mean- Right, and the uh, executive of Microsoft, Xbox, like the head of the Xbox division at Microsoft has also talked about distancing their, their the relationship with Blizzard. Um, I mean, the problem with this is when we rattle off the names of the games at the beginning of the pod, I mean, I mean, all of those titles just mint money, right? Right. So even if you never updated them ever, ever again and didn't make new versions and just sold them to everyone who gets a console, you, you know, it's a little like Microsoft Word. It just mints money. Yeah. I mean, but I think they're like, you still... Change is needed, change is wanted, and maybe this is the actual catalyst where they can turn it around. But it would likely mean a, a massive shift in, in leadership. Uh, so I guess the distinction I would make between, and again, I don't know the gamer space as well as you do, but it seems to me that the CEO of a company that's got six or eight blue chip titles and needs to update them and do new versions and fix bugs. Like that's not like, like Zuckerberg, I could see why the shareholders would defend him because whatever the thing is he's building, arguably they're not done building it yet. And he's still doing the visionary guy thing, which I know I'm going to get a hate mail for that. And I'm not sure that's actually even right, but I just don't, I don't see, I don't see how the changing at the CEO at Activision it has any meaningful impact for shareholders. I don't see, I don't see how it, you know, I, I, again, I also don't, I don't know what he's, what his day-to-day -day job is. 
I mean, one thing to know about these gains, it's like they're, they're, they're essentially like great, um, examples of actually like a met, like the, uh, the meta world, I guess. Right. They're, they're kind of, they're interactive, they're role-playing oriented. They're sort of third spaces where people are going to interact. And so I think even though it's not necessarily considered a social network, you know, you can say that the ecosystem and the communities that are the underpinning of these games, the fact that they're not governed in a way that is inclusive, equitable, that they have a non-harassment, zero tolerance sort of culture um, is like a huge risk. So not only for shareholders, but like society at large. So place your bets. He weathers the storm and gets a slap on the wrist or he's out. Oh man. It's again, it's super hard to tell. I don't know who the board is. I don't know the relationships. All, all, I think, friend, all friends of his. I mean, again, it's, it's possible that, you know, there he's going to hire like a chief diversity officer, a new head of HR. There are already 20 people who have exited the company and 20 more who've gotten warnings. And so they're going to go on a whole corporate comms roadshow where they're going to kind of pacify the 1000 plus workers who are up in arms over this. And I don't know, I'm going to say it's going to be 51% too little, too late, 49%. Okay. This is going to set like a, a precedent in the industry. And by the way, is there anybody, I mean, I don't know the data, but you, you know, I'm presuming that the buyers of these games are more male than female. Mm -hmm. So is there anybody going into Best Buy and picking up World of Warcraft and going, uh, I don't know, I heard bad things about the company and putting it back on the shelf? Is it having any impact on on the bottom line of the place? Um, I mean, it could. I mean, again, I think the this like this younger consumers are pretty uh they want their purchases to be aligned with their values i'm not saying companies will go bank i'm not saying they're going to go bankrupt but you know you said something earlier about them about these games being worlds and you know one of the things about this whole discussion about the metaverse which you know strangely enough facebook probably pushed into being a public conversation the fact that netflix three months ago, reasonably quietly has started building a gaming vertical. You know, that's their hedge against if you want something immersive and participatory, mm -hmm. we're going to figure out some way to offer you that on a subscription basis. Yeah. I mean, um, they, these games are like the gateway into the metaverse being a reality. Game Games are the metaverse, are the gateway into the metaverse. That's a, that's a good, or they are the metaverse or all metaverse. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, moving on. So, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna place my bet. I'm gonna say that the CEO is out. Um, that he's wealthy as Crotius. He's got other stuff he wants to do. That that the drumbeat of unhappy employees isn't gonna go away without a head they can put on a spike. And that you know, and he's re you know he's more than just you know ignoring these problems. He's probably part of that culture. So, I'm not, that's my bet. So. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right, let's move on to chapter two because it's equally juicy um, and talk about, about Facebook. So this is a story in The Atlantic and the headline is, I made the world's blandest Facebook profile just to see what would happen. Yep. So um, the writer is Catherine Tiffany, uh, Caitlin Tiffany, no, I'm sorry. Caitlin, Caitlin Tiffany. And she talks about the fact that there have been all of these other people who've done right wing profiles and left wing profiles and seen kind of how the rabbit hole behaves. But her idea, which I think was pretty innovative, was literally just to be bland. Mm -hmm. And her story, she just liked nice things, you know, pizza and the rolling and Rolling Stone and like, like, didn't go didn't, random pages, not necessarily like right wing politics no politicians issues. right no politicians no issues 
And the journey, the, the algorithm takes her down without any um, help from her is really fucking just scary. It still shows her like very controversial things, lewd comments, like just kind of very toxic content. Yeah. And also strangely suggests friends of her, like friends you may like that are like, just not any, like she get no, based on no, so, so part of what we're trying to disassemble here is, is the underlying Facebook lookalike audience algorithm, right? Which is if you say you like Oprah and pizza and the Rolling Stones and um, Hello Kitty, does it find another person who happens to be in the Midwest, you know, who likes some, like, it's not just proximity or school or, you know, you know, you went to the same, you know, yoga studio. It's, it's, you look that per, this person who may not be anywhere near you physically, may be kind of like you and have similar tastes. Right. But, but it's, it, um, it's, it's surprisingly random and creepy. Um, I, are you surprised? Were you surprised by the outcome? Well, um, I mean, I guess if you think about it logically, right? I mean, the algorithm says new person signs up for Facebook. I have to fill these 15 slots three times a week, which is a friend, a band, uh, uh, a food product, uh, a business. Some, so it's it's out there scourging around looking for things in the algorithm and, you know, to, to stuff to fill these holes. And if you don't give it, if, if it uses bad data or you don't give it, reasonable data it just fills it with garbage mm -hmm. or it's not necessarily garbage it's just miscellaneous content that is probably intended to provoke right because any because then it, if it shows you something and you react to it then you're telling it something so i am still on facebook um although moving in kind of away from it uh, for a variety of reasons some of them political and some of them just ban mental bandwidth. But like I have told Facebook with a click probably 150 times that I don't want to have it recommend, you know, people I might like or famous people. And it continues to just pull up stuff that, I mean, the only way I can describe it, and if there's Facebook developers listening, it just makes me angry. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, one thing that to remember is that um, Facebook merged its backend across Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, and then the core yeah. Facebook.com experience. And so like when I have co these conversations with people, it's like, I'm not on Facebook. I'm like, okay, but your, your activity on Instagram, like when you click that ad or you added this person as a friend, it's like all part of the same ecosystem. Right. I, I like no celebrities. I like no television stars. I like no, I have one or two musical artists, but there, I, I really make an effort to not, like I'm just not interested in having recommendations like that. I mean, you know, so far the best recommendation that I've gotten in the last three weeks was from you recommending a television show on Hulu, mm -hmm. uh, which by the way is a clue about curation and why I believe at the end of the day, you know, I, I never would have clicked on that show. This is um, Murder in the Building, which I, I don't know why. I mean, I literally walked by while while they were shooting it. I took pictures of the <laughs> of the crew. I posted pictures of the shoot. Um, it has actors, you know, it's not like yeah, random yeah. people. And it just never made its way into my mental queue. And then you said, "Hey, this is kind of funny." And I was like, the the minute I watched the first episode, I was like, you know, you know that that's what friends do for other friends, which is, hey, it I also has like a fun podcast element in it. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> And by the way, the restaurant you asked me about, the answer is yes, I've been there three times. It's delicious. Okay. Uh, um, no, but like whatever, you know, that that was always the mission behind curation back before it became robotic and algorithmic was that people who are friends of mine and who I know, you know, who I would go to a concert with or I would go to a movie with or I would go out to dinner with, I want to know what they're doing because I'm interested in their recommendations um, as opposed to, you went here, so you might like this. Anyway. Right. Um, so I think this Facebook 
article um, in a way that, I mean, I've been following obviously all of the Francis Hoagland, you know, whistleblower story. There's something about this story that I ended up feeling like Facebook was even more broken than I thought it was. Not just that people mm -hmm. were trying to use the platform to do bad things, in which case they could figure out how to identify the bad people and then limit them. I don't know if this is, not that I'm defending Facebook, I just don't know if this is um, unique to Facebook. So um, Matt, my husband, he he's on Instagram. He's not on Facebook anymore. And he is like immune from being marketed to. Like all like we're as we've talked about on the show, like we're actively shopping for like baby products and stuff. My entire feed uh, and like retargeted ad content is stuff I've seen or I'm potentially interested in. And he gets none of it. And like they're he, like he's so intentional about clearing his cookies. Oh, he's yeah. so intentional about having fake email aliases like it's it's complex in terms of like doing it but when you do it it's it can be done i don't know i i'm on an endless <laughs> i'm on an endless unsubscribe <laughs> kick um all right so let's 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 get on to thanksgiving because there's a lot to cover here so so first of all um you know, it's a little bit of a landmine, you know, that, you know, what are we thankful for America? It's a little like the 4th of July. I always feel like, oh, yay, I'm celebrating America. Complicated. Then, you know, my, for my non meat eating friends, there's the turkey part problem, but let's talk about, I like this article we found from CMIT solutions because it was like five ways, ways technology can make Thanksgiving better. How, what what's not to love about that, right? Right. So, so um, and with the understanding that some of our listeners are going to be upset by, you know, some some portion of this. But let's start with there. So there were five suggestions, um, and and we'll just go through them and then we'll dig in a little bit. Um, so the first one was cooking and meal prep, and you know, they basically were like, you know, they had specific ideas about shopping, planning apps, um, you know, essentially kitchen pad, timer, interactive scales. They had a kind of a list of, of cooking and meal planning apps. Um, and I am using them, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, particularly for, for menu, you know, you know, trying to do a little bit of diversity on the menu, trying to be healthy, trying to do some different vegetable things, um, trying to, do less things that are either candied or have melted marshmallows on the top. Um, no, I'm not, we don't really do that. Um, um, do you like, do you cook? I do. Are you cooking this year? Or are you going somewhere? Do you have a, I'm um, going to my parents, but I usually help make sides. My dad does the Turkey and I handle the sides. So do you know any, anything you can share that it's unique? To you, I'm not saying your name because I didn't mute the other no, it's okay. Okay. Um, I mean, in a lot of Italian American households, like it's a little ridiculous because we have like a huge antipasto course. So like you just it's so easy to get full on meats, cheeses, you know, just in the in the beginning. We've scaled back in recent years, but we used to do like pasta. <laughs> As During the, Thanksgiving. As, uh, as, no, like as, as like part of the meal, my dad usually does baked clams. Like we have like two or three extra courses in there that are not like part of your regular Thanksgiving. Baked clams. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So, so suggestion number two, Skype, Facebook, or video calling services. Again, people are far away. Not everyone's going to be able to come seems like the COVID lockdown is lifting, although God knows what that means in real life. I'm glad we're not getting, nobody in my family is getting on planes. Yeah, um, same. We were out walking the dogs yesterday and there was a husband and wife 
and three children and they all were dragging, you know, rolly bags on their way to the car. And I just, I, I, every bone in my water, I would say to them, no, stay home. Don't go. It's going to be <laughs> terrible. You're, go, you're taking, you know, like you're going to the airport. Don't go to the airport. Yeah. But they were, um, all right. So, um, so what are your favorites from this list or like not list? Like what are, as a tech, technophile, what are your um, pro tips for technology in the holidays? Skype is dead. <laughs> Everyone Skype knows how to use Zoom now. Everyone knows how to use Zoom or Every, FaceTime. Um, um, FaceTime seems to be a family thing. I don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if I'm obliged to do FaceTime, I will. Um, Google Meet also dead. Um, yeah, I would say Skype. Zoom giving. No, I, 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 I would say Zoom, Zoom uh, of mm -hmm. all of them. Um, and also nobody, whatever that Facebook device was that was supposed to be a, a, a family Portal. network. Yeah. That total fail, right? It's still alive. It's like in the portfolio. Of I know, the, but they it, sold like the meta family. Yeah. But they sold like three of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, um, it's not the most high tech thing, but like, honestly, a great Bluetooth speaker and like having a, a playlist on Spotify or Pandora teed up. It's great. That's, when by you're the way, cooking or just background music. But, but I just want to say, not Christmas songs, though. I definitely was listening to Christmas music yesterday. Oh, oh you're killing me. Really? Before Thanksgiving? Yeah. Before Thanksgiving. I, like, I literally was in like Home Goods earlier today, and I bought these little Christmas hat wine stoppers. I'm like, in the way that you're like crazy about Halloween, I'm like crazy about Christmas. I know, but it's all right. What, a different well, episode, I, different episode. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, there'll be plenty of time for that. All right. So um, next, entertainment. So Pam and I talked about this. We have a lot of people coming. You know, we're not a football family, so we're not going to do that. Um, you know, we, we have we have certainly from time to time, we love the parade. We're, we're blocks away from the parade, but I'm not sure we'll go. Although I would go, but like, I don't know what the weather is going to be like. If it's blisteringly cold, then maybe not. Um, and we don't have any small children. The parade is a child thing. Um, but, but we have watched Puppy Bowl on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. um, I like to have the parade on like in the background. And yes. I do think that if you can uh, record either DVR or if you have like youtube or hulu premium like you can record it and you can fast forward if you want to see like a musical act or a broadway cast i think it's good for that so, so the problem with that is you have to actually then control it because the yammer of the hosts is insane so you have to turn that down and then when the performance comes you have to go and turn the volume it's like a you need i know to, you need to, there, that's a great by the way there ought to be a feed for the parade with no hosts just music and then crowd noise that's cool. I actually, I mean, tangent, there are so many ways to slice and dice content and broadcasts that no one is pursuing. I think if it were me, I might go down to Macy's and set up my iPhone on a tripod and just broadcast a clean feed of the parade. Yeah. I mean, you can actually cast your phone, like you can use Apple TV and just mirror your phone to any TV. And Roku does it too. Right. And so just yeah. pull up like a random Instagram, Twitter user, Twitcher. So I don't know that we're going to DVR or TiVo anything, but we are talking about like getting out the chessboard, getting out the Scrabble board, like having some, mm -hmm. some phys you know, having some games out. Have you ever played Jackbox TV? I don't know what that is. So jackbox.tv, if you go to the URL, you actually like buy a gaming pack. And then the way it works is they're group games. And so everyone has their phone. You visit jackbox.tv. You enter the unique game code, right, for your room that everyone can see on the television. And then you can play like an interactive game. I'm looking and it's at like it. There could be like trivia, and then people answer on their phones. It could be like a like a drawing game, and then people are doodling on their phones. It's very fun. Um, it seems like it wants me. It, here's what's interesting. I'm not, so here, I, I thought I was showing it to you, but I wasn't. So I'm on the site. I went to Jackbox, 
-hmm. it immediately wanted a, a room code and a name, which I obviously don't have because I don't know anything about it. Oh, so that's, that's the experience of like uh, now if we, I was in your living room and we were going to play, right. we would so, go to Jackbox TV, enter this room code. And right, then but, we would right. But shouldn't there be a, if for, for a newbie like me, shouldn't there be a, here's what you can find? I think the bottom, right? Is that what that carousel is down there? Uh, These are uh, all games. Can you click them? No. Yeah, here's where you buy the games. Wow, that's a lot. That's that's a strange UI, right? Yeah, it's like they <laughs> might have an A in games, but they get a B in UI because I would I would you got you got you got uh, you got to sell me. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow, and they want money right up front, and it's not cheap. No, it's like a it's like if you were buying a board game, but at least it's a party pack because there are like multiple games in one set. Well, again, you're recommending it. So Matt, I'm Matt, Matt and I will literally set up a Jackbox and you and Pam can play with us one night. All right. Well, I'm, 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 I, I wish that they were being a little bit more welcoming <laughs> to me as a new potential <laughs> user. All right. Anyway. Um, so, so back to um, the, the last suggestions here. And then we got to talk about the parade for a minute. Um, and then we're going to run out of time. Um, so they're saying the last two ideas is electric carving knife. Doesn't sound very technology advanced, but I ask anyone who has had to cut up a turkey the old fashioned way, they prefer the semi-sharp blade or the electric carving knife. Um, My dad will not carve a turkey unless it's with his electric carving knife. So if I go on Amazon right now and order electric carving knife, it'll come tomorrow? Yeah, you can definitely get one. I bet it'll come in two hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might get an, I might do that. That might be, I, I've never had one. Oh, we are they battery powered now? Of course they are. I'm sure. I'm sure you can get one that's like Bluetooth enabled or something. And it's going to hook up to some digital thermometer right, hold, or hold, something. Hold on. So long, so long as we're playing <laughs> Amazon carving. Electric carving knife. knife. Uh, no, electric. Turkey. Um, wow. Okay. These are all electric. regular. Yeah. Um, forty nine dollars. Ouch! All right, hold on. Let's sort by low to. Pr and it's weird because it's only like we don't eat turkey any other time of the year, so it really is something you're using once a year. All That's right. So specialized. So yeah, twenty four bucks. It's like the equivalent of like uh, an electric toothbrush. Do you need but, it? No, but if you have ever used an electric no, toothbrush, no, no, that, but that's not that's not the same combination because electric toothbrush theoretically makes your teeth healthier. Electric carving knife, I mean, the only thing you could use it for is to never mind. Um, <laughs> um, these all appear to be plugs, so I don't see I don't see battery. Okay. Um, and twenty four. I want. I see. I was thinking they were. It was going to be like. Amazon stupid cheap. Like, I mean, I guess here, Lee Cuisine, tw 20 bucks. Get it tomorrow. Get yeah. it tomorrow. Um, cordless, as cordless. seen on t $19. Da, 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 da. Um, battery powered knife. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that was right. fun. Okay. Let's see what you have to, what do you have to say about the parade in the all last right. uh, yeah. minute? Um, so I was looking around. The History Channel has, a whole article about Thanksgiving parade tech. Um, and this is actually a show on the history channel about Thanksgiving parade mm -hmm. tech. There's something you should DVR. Yes. Uh, I don't even know. Do I, do I get the history channel? I guess I must. Do you um, have cable? Sort I of, I, sort of. I've got super cheap cloud cable, something or another. Um, I don't have the wire. I have it through my internet. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I, th see, I was gonna show you a little bit of it, but of course I have to show a commercial first. Um, so there is a lot of great, here we go. This, this is the, we'll put the link in the, uh, in the show notes. This is the technology of the parade. Now, the, the, if you remember back in the day, the balloons used to fly higher. They've since kind of dragged them down to ground level for safety and um, I liked when they were way up in the air when they went by the buildings. Um, that being said, this is some great old classic footage of the technology of the parade. Um, 
I have never been a balloon handler, but if I made any, if I, that, I would do that. I would march in the parade and, mm -hmm. and, and carry one of those helium balloons. I think I would. I, I know someone who does it with his mom every year. How, how did he get hooked up? He works at Macy's now. No, I think it was just process, but he's been doing it for years. I was fascinated by it. Maybe we should would get him as ask, a guest. Would you ask him if there's like a secret a process, website like where a I form? can? Yeah, I'm. Um, I would do that extra. That would be fun. Yep, I will. All right, we are out of time. Happy, Happy holidays. Happy Day. All right, see you next week. See you next week. Bye.